so those three classification nowadays if you look at the soil classification this is termed as soil taxonomy and under the soil taxonomy multiple taxonomical groups are created under which the soil is categorized in different layers or the different types you can say not layers actually different types the very first thing in this soil taxonomy is the order so we have the total 12 orders here then we have the multiple sub orders under these orders these sub orders have also grade soil group these grade soil groups are again uh, divided in the soil sub groups then soil sub groups are divided in the soil family and ultimately the all soil families are divided in multiple soil series so these three order sub order and grade soil group are termed as higher category of the soil taxonomy and the all remaining three are termed as lower category of the soil taxonomy so we have total 12 orders as i have told you and 63 sub orders and trick to remember these all orders is written here that is awagami house so all the different types of soil orders come under these different letters these every letter of this is denoting some kind of soil so awagami house if you look at the awagami house let's see uh, what are the different soil orders from the e there is anti sol then from the i we have insepti sol then a we have aridi sol with m we have molly sols with the s we have the scodo sols then again uh, a which is denoting the alfi sols then u u is denoting alti sols o is denoting oxy sols h is denoting histo sols v is denoting verti sols again a uh, a is denoting nb sols and then g is for the jelly sols so the total 12 letters here are denoting all different types of soil orders here you can see these are 12 in number so one by one the properties of the different soil orders we will see in the upcoming slides so remember the name of the all soil orders this particular trick is used which is awagami house so the very first type of the soil is here anti sols the anti sols are also called as a zonal type of soil which is immature kind of soil it is says still in the maturing process not mature or not developed fully so anti sols are recently developed soil with no diagnostic horizon these all are under the anti sols so then we have seen the alluvial soil alluvial soil is also type of anti sol which is why because that is not fully developed yet is not having any horizons there so dominant soil order in the world the majority of the soil that you can find out in the world is type of anti sol if you include all the mountains if you include all the terrains if you include uh, the alluvial soil as well so this will be the highest proportion of all the soil types in the world then we have the insepti sols insepti sols they exhibit minimal horizon development and they are dominant order in india if you look at the india the highest amount of soil type you can find out of the insepti sol and we very here in the anti sol no horizon development will takes place in the insepti sol a little amount of horizon development will takes place not the fully developed kind of horizon for example the alluvial soil alluvial soil will only have the o horizon then a horizon the remaining are missing here so that is under the insepti sol in india the highest amount of percentage of the soil type you can find out is the insepti sol so i hope both the soil orders are clear to you the next soil order that we have to discuss is the verti sols we have already discussed that that is also called as regur that is also called as rendgina no uh, rendgina maybe rendgina type of soil or kind of black soil so they are also called as black cotton soil because i have told you black soil is best for the cotton growth and development so that's why this is black cotton soil then we have they have high content of expensive clay known as montmorillo night so the clay of the multiple types you can find out like kaolinite then we have the vermiculite then we have the montmorillo night so out of these different types of clay materials or clay minerals the montmorillo night type is very common in the verti sols the highest amount of the clay mineral you can find out is the montmorillo night 
Then we have the mollisols. Mollisols is the world's most agriculturally productive soil order. So the most productive or the most fertile type of soil order is which one? That is the mollisols. They are typically dark base rich soil with a base saturation of more than 50%. So this is important here. Base saturation should be more than 50% to be categorized under the moly soil. If base saturation is less than 50%, then that cannot be termed as a moly soil order of the soil. Then we have the arid soils. So as in the name, this is containing the arid soil type. So found in the arid or the semi-arid climate and salt is accumulated on surface or subsurface horizon. And that is due to the insufficient amount of precipitation or rainfall that you can see in the arid zone. So that's why salt is not leaching away or not going away with the runoff that is accumulated in one place. So that is arid soil type of soil. Then we have the alkali soil. So alf refers to the aluminium and iron. It means sesquioxide. Again. Popularly called as red soils. Then base saturation is at least 35% in these alfi soils. So why it is called as a red soil? Because the alfi soil color is red. And if it is color is red, and that is due to the presence of the sesquioxides. So this is again the kind of laterite soil. So laterite soil is under the category of alfi soils. Then we have the alti soils. So they are comparatively with the alfi soils, except for having base saturation less than the 35%. So here base saturation is less than 35% in alfi soil, it is more than 35%. Then we have the spodosols, so podjolization we have seen. So podjol soil are under the spodosol category or spodosol order. So accumulation of sesquioxides and humus in the subsurface region. This takes place in the spodosol and the podjolization is observed here in the spodosol category. So that we have already seen. So podjol type of soil are under the, under the podjolization process or under the spodosol of the order. Then we have the next soil order that is the histosol. So they are organic matter rich soil with more than 20% of organic matter. This is the key thing about the histosol. If the organic matter is more than 20%, then only that particular soil can be categorized under the histosol category. The next soil type or soil order we have to discuss is the ND soils. ND soils, they are soils developed on the volcanic ash. So these are generally find out in the island region. And India also, very few amount of ND soil you can find out in the Andaman Nicobar Island. And no ND, ND soils you can find out majorly in the Indian subcontinent or the Indian country. So ND soil you can only find out in the Andaman and Nicobar Island. Then we have the Oxy soil, so highly weathered soil in the world, the most weathered you can say. And this is found in the humid areas and these are very poor in fertility. So no fertility you can find out here in the category of Oxy soil. So very poorly weathered and very poorly fertile soil. Then we have the jelly soils. Jelly soils so the cryoturbation. So these are the tundra soil that we have seen. Majority of the time there would be formation of ice layer on above of these, uh, these soil that is the jelly soil. And these soils, the cryoturbation. What is the cryoturbation? So what happens in the soil layer during the winter time? So during this winter time, suppose this is a tree and this is going up like this. And during the winter time, the ice will come and the ice formation will take place. Now everything is covered with ice during this time. So that water present inside of the soil layer also that is completely frozen. So when there would be spring season come or autumn season come, the ice will go away. And on that time, the liquidification of this ice will take place and again when there would be the condition of the 
winter will come so again everything is frozen so when the winter will come after the spring season the water which is present below the surface this will expand because we know that the volume of ice is more than the volume of water itself and on that situation the roots of the trees will come out from the surface like this so this process of the turbation or this process of creating the soil layer out from the inner layer or taking the plant roots out from the inner layer so this is called as the cryo turbation so that turbation which is created due to the cryo formation or due to ice formation so whenever such kind of scenario you can find out so that is in the order of the jelly soul and that you can only find out in the very cold climate like tundra region or polar region so that is the under the category of the jelly soul soil order so i hope all the soil orders are clear to you then we have the different soil particles classification so in the last examination there was one question from the soil particle classification that you can see two types of the particle classification methods are provided one is provided by the usda so that is united states department of agriculture they have provided and another is provided by the i i triple s i triple s is indian soil science society so indian soil science society have also provided the different sizes of the fraction and their particular respective name and similarly usda is also provided sometimes in the examination they can ask you the classification of the i triple s or maybe sometimes they can ask you the classification of usda as well so according to the usda if any soil particle is more than 2 mm then that would be categorized under the gravel 1 to 2 mm particles are very coarse sands 0.5 to 1 are the coarse sands 0.25 to 0.5 are the medium sand 0.1 to 0.25 is fine sand 0.05 to 0.10 is very fine sand then 0.002 to 0.05 is silt and less than the 0.002 is our clay similarly we have the i triple s system i triple s system have the category of these first category of gravel that is having more than 2 mm size second category of the sand we have that is the coarse sand and it is having the range of 0.2.0 0.2 to 2.0 then we have the category of fine sand that is the third category in the i triple s that is in the range of 0.02 to 0.2 mm and then we have the category of silt and clay only five categories you can find out in the i triple s while in the case of usda there are total eight categories the silt size is almost same 0.002 so instead of 0.00 0.05 you can write down 0.02 then in the case of clay <clears throat> the usda and the i triple s both classification are same which is less than 0.002 mm so these are the two different types of soil particles classification that you have to remember in usda we have the eight categories in i triple s we have only five categories and their respective soil sizes particle can be asked in the examination so i hope this is clear to you and the next thing that we have to start is the soil nutrients so all the nutrients that are present in the soil according to the plant requirement they varied in three categories the first is called as the macronutrient the second is called as the micronutrient and the other all minerals which is or nutrients which is not under the two categories those are unclassified minerals so macronutrients or micro elements are present in the soil excess than 10 millimole per kg in tissue concentration of the plant or 0.1 to 10 mg per gram of the dry weight of the plant so those all which are required in the high amount how much high amount excess than the 10 mm per kg or 0.1 to 10 mg per dry matter kg so those all are under the category of macronutrients so macronutrients are carbon hydrogen oxygen these are the basic life requirement basic elements these are then we have the npk npk is categorized under the primary nutrient and then calcium magnesium sulfur these three are secondary nutrient 
So all these three are macronutrients. Then we have the micronutrients. So less than the 10 millimole per kg in tissue concentration of the plant or equal or less than 0.1 milligram per gram of the dry weight of the plant. The examples here are Teku Manjan, the iron, manganese, copper, zinc. And then we have the molybdenum, boron, chlorine, and nickel. So these all are under the category of micronutrients. Then we have the unclassified minerals required for some plants in trace amount and have some specific functions. For example, the plant will need sodium, cobalt, silicon, and selenium. Without that, cannot survive. But here, the role are very specific, functions are very specific. So the very trace amount or very little amount of these minerals are required to the body. So this is what soil different types of nutrients are.